it's week five of the National Football League. And we'll get to see the Eagles superstar tight end. No one's been busier this season as he currently paces the NFL in receptions. It's the Eagles and the Lions. And it we are pleased as always to be bringing you coverage football. of the National Football League on EA Sports. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Eagles, it's been all systems go in this first month. They're off to a 4-0 start. And as Gap folks believe that this is a team that's... Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Gaw. And his stat line last week, that's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl. All right, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is team won, managed the game effectively, led them to victory. He's doing all the right things. Throws out left. It's caught by Williams. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards on the gain. A great start for this offense. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. And they'll send the tight end in motion. Now gone. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Gibbs. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. In motion right one of the tight ends. On first and 10, here's Gibbs. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Play three of the drive, not as successful. They go backwards after those two first down gains. You look at this Eagle defense. Now, they were terrific a week ago in the win over Seattle. And it was the pass rush that really keyed their victory. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Well, this defense for the Eagles, they were terrific a week ago in the win over Seattle. And what keyed their victory? The pass rush. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. Hard to throw the ball downfield, but all you're seeing is opposing jerseys come at you. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They're led out by the former Michigan State QB, a starter here in his rookie campaign. And he's got to be feeling pretty good about himself right now because he's coming off of a strong performance in the team's win last week. And you can just tell, even early in his rookie season, he's starting to get really comfortable out there, and things are starting to fall into place. In fact, in talking to the rival defensive coordinator of the team he's facing this week, he told me this young man's starting to get it. Here's a second and five. He'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. They're going to look to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slam, and it's intercepted. It's the linebacker, Alex Anzalone. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. 
That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. After the interception, here's Goff. And that's to Amon Ross St. Brown. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A gain of 32 that time. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Back to throw. Golf. And in for the Lions. Touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown. His first touchdown on the year. And the Lions use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They That's didn't recover from point it. Point and you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Extra point good by Hopkins. And it's now a 7-0 game. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So back onto the field. Here come the Eagles for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football. Wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Here's a second and seven. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Here now, third and a yard. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. Nine yards that time. The Eagles are the perfect 4-0 to start the campaign. And they've been playing their best football of the year. Winners are four in a row. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. They'll look to throw now on first down. And this one nearly picked off. Kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. Now the first carry here for the running back. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. 17 yards and a first down for Philly. And if his coaches are correct, we're going to see a lot more runs like that from this young rookie going forward. And you know slapping each other on the back up in the boots right now? The scouting department. Because they really recommended this guy highly, and he's justifying their faith in him. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Pick made by Terrell Bernard. Brandon, how many times have we talked with these rookies out there? And when we finally hear from them that the game slows down and they're able to handle things, not so far for this rookie. Because right now, back-to-back -back drives, they picked him off. Not college football anymore. He's got to find a way to handle what these defenses throw at him. And Detroit getting set to go now. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10.
And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. And the numbers for Gibbs from last week, 16 carries, 63 yards, and a touchdown. There were some signs of life from their ground game last week, but overall, just a so-so performance. Everyone knows they can make a slight improvement how they contribute to this aspect of the offense. Lyman can set their blocks and hold them a little bit longer, and he can be quicker to the hole and hit a lane. If they do that, they should get some better numbers for this this week. And St. Brown going to have the Lions first down as he'll be brought down at the 42-yard line. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter, and it's been a quarter dominated by the guys with the football. Gibbs straight ahead. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. From the 47, it's second and five. Brings up second and five. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter action now from Detroit, and it's the homestanding Lions who have the football. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and five. Gone. He's got right on the short throw. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. This now a third and four. From the gun, here's Goff. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Lions first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. First down. First and ten at the 45-yard line. Now back to the ground, here's Gibbs. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Goff now looking to throw. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. In every game, we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them, and they get their first sack of the contest. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit. Like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. Second and nine now. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route, and the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Ball on the 40 now. Here's a second and seven. They'll look to throw. 
He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. It's his first kick. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Carlton Davis picks it. And the Lions are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ball game. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How'd things turn out for him? I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. he's doing okay. Here's Goff. And that nearly trouble, but it's incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it. And it'll be second down. It's now second and 10 at the 25 yard line. Out of the gun. Golf. Throw right side. Complete to Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line. Holding offense. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Here's Goff. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. St. Brown making the catch on the out route. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. How about that? They weather the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll send a receiver here in motion right. Again, golf. Throw left side complete. That's Gibbs. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Second and six. A gain of four. It's now second and six. Goff now to throw. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. And St. Brown going to have the Lions first down as the tackle made up at the 48-yard line. That's good for the Lions. Now Goff. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Here's Gaugh. Throw over the middle. He finds Williams. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Throwing again is Gaugh. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. 
And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Back to throw again. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. They'll look to throw again. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Again, he'll drop to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Third down and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only about one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. And he missed it. It's no good. And this will stay at a seven-point game. And now two problems as I see it. First, you missed the kick, which granted was a long one. But second, you set the other guys up a great field position and enough time to maybe get downfield and get a field goal attempt of their own. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. Back to throw, Goff. Setting up the screen, this is Gibbs. And he'll take this to the other side of their field before going out of bounds. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. A shotgun snap for Goff. He's got it complete to Gibbs. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is going to wind up left. Well struck. But it's no good. But a flag is down here, so hold on. Let's see what this is about. Okay, so the personal foul penalty. And those are some important yards lost right there. Yeah, it all comes down to discipline, doesn't it? And every team tells us that they coach it, they preach it. In this case, it slipped a little bit. A 42-yard attempt. Hopkins' kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you, too, in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught up with what's going on around the NFL here in Week 5. We'll start in the Meadowlands, an NFC East battle that pits Washington against the New York football Giants. And it's the home team who are out in front. Terry McLaurin, a touchdown catch from Jaden Daniels. From there, it's off to Indianapolis to check on the Colts at Lucas Oil Stadium. And they trail the visiting Chiefs in that one. Patrick Mahomes throwing the football well. He has three touchdown passes. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City. See what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And that game all tied up as they do battle with the visiting Raiders.
In the first half, it was the veteran quarterback, Jared Goff, who had command of the offense. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Eagles offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And it's been a struggle for him all afternoon. This defense has really done a nice job of making him earn everything he gets. And it's prevented him from getting into any kind of rhythm here today. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? We're paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks. I just say you continue to play your game. Throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half. So make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers. A little bit more to the perimeter, perhaps. But above all, play your game. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback on the expected passing situation. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Great coverage there holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt, and the Lions will take over. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. They'll fake the handoff. Now go off. And that'll be caught by St. Brown. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. So no gain on the play. And it's second down. Brings up second and ten at the 20-yard line. Goff. He'll go right back to St. Brown. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Good work after the catch, gets him 15 and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Off play action. Here's Goff. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Now gone. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Tough spot here. Third down and 11. Gone. He's airing it out for Williams. It's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And this group has suffered far too many self-inflicted wounds thus far as we run through some of the mistakes. It, it's darn near impossible to win in this league when you're turning the ball over at the frequency that they have. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. 
And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's offense. their turn now to go out and try and get some points. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. They'll drop the throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. So it's a gain of 12 there on the reception, and that'll bring up second down. They'll set up to throw. He's going to air one out. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, when the running game's not working sometimes, you just got to take a few more chances down the field. That's a good effort, but it winds up incomplete. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Uh, he had a man on the three, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And they certainly aren't letting up today, partner, because they've forced big turnovers already. And it's been incredibly tough for them to get yards against, let alone put points up on the board. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches... Don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. And that was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Holding offense. And this third down looking very tough after the holding penalty. Third and long. Now it's gone. Throw to St. Brown, complete on the left side. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. A 40-yard punt, no return, and it will be Eagles football first and 10. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that can put your team in some jeopardy? And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. They'll look to throw now on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Out of the gun now on third down. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So they decline the hold, and that's going to lead to a fourth down. And I tell you what, he got it from 50 
eight. That had lots of leg behind it. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to three. So three points, maybe not a grand prize at this stage, but it does get them back within one score. It certainly does because now they stay within shouting distance. So that means everyone on your sideline stays engaged in this game. They know they still have a shot. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Well, they've got the lead here getting late into the third quarter. And the passing game for them, it's been terrific. We've seen that. But the rushing game, almost non-existent. And with the lead and trying to finish this game off, they need the running game to come back to life. They need to get sparked that way, take some time off the clock, and keep the ball away from their opponents. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Well, partner, I would say just avoid play action. But that's not just been the problem. This defense, they've been getting pressure on all types of pass plays and really piling up the sacks in this contest. Yep. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. He's to the 15. Touchdown. Allen Ross St. Brown. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Lions are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you can have at that position, and sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Eagles behind on the scoreboard, but with the football here as we start the fourth quarter. They go play action here on first down. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Jack Campbell with a pick. And he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Well, you just kind of feel for him right now. Four interceptions, and you can almost see through his face mask. There's a lot going on in between the ears. There certainly is, and probably way too much, because now he's probably doubting himself a little bit, wondering what adjustments he has to make. But here's what he needs to do. Get through this game, go to the press conference, meet it head on, and show your teammates you're ready to shoulder what happened today and you'll be ready for the next game. And if he can do that as a rookie, that's a great sign of maturity. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. And motion left goes a tight end. After the interception, here's Goff. Locating St. Brown for another catch. And in for the Lions, touchdown. Jared Goff with his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. And the Lions are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And, well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit the defense. He made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. Oh, a good return up past the 30. 
with Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. And their four-game win streak very much in jeopardy as they go to work here late with a first and ten. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards on the play. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. He'll look to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Second and 13. Throwing it in traffic there, and that's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down with a nice little game. And this offense on third down today, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and four. They'll set up a throw. That is incomplete. And that's another play that's been in the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Eagles unable to convert there on fourth. And the Lions will take over. The oh, offensive nightmare there. You go for it on fourth, and the play doesn't even really get to develop a sack. And it's so unfortunate, too, because you think you've got something good called, but if your offensive line can't hold up, that's often the result. They find a way back to the quarterback. throw this to Laporta right side and this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short that's good the completion there for seven yards and that's going to make it fourth down here comes the Lions punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today and the punt over the side
Well, they got the ball already. They're not going to risk the yardage and running another fourth down. They decline it. And what was that they taught you in law school, that possession is nine-tenths of the law? I didn't go to law school. Oh, you didn't? I thought you did. Well, I figure I'm going to put that give that to you anyway. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, and it's nine-tenths of this game, too. Having the football counts. You're so litigious. <laughs> They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. counter play here's Gibbs and this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there brings up second down the fourth quarter here they've got the lead they want to keep it on the ground that's what they're doing smart football keep the clock grinding keep it going but you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out Second down, and they go back to Gibbs. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Holding offense. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. That's on the tackle, Panay Sewell. Second down, and they go back to Gibbs. And he's only able to work this from the 8 to the 10 for a pickup of 2. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. That result really no surprise. That's what we're coming accustomed to with this number one ranked rush defense. And you study the game. Is this bringing back a few memories? Maybe the 85 Bears trying to move the ball against them, 2000 Ravens. Heck, how about the late 60s, early 70s purple people eaters, the Minnesota Vikings? Hard to move the ball against those types of teams. And he'll take it just outside the 40. A 46-yard boot, but just 36 following a pretty decent return of 10 yards. And the Eagles will have great starting field position here as they take over. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this is caught. It's Brown. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. And that's going to be caught for an Eagles touchdown. A great effort there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Eagles are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. And this is up and good. That'll make it a score now of 24 to 10. A drive there of just four plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And they will take a knee here. 
so this one's over. It's a win for the Detroit Lions. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, that's to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward. So for the Lions, they boost their record up to a strong 4-1. and one, And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, it was a good first month, but they'll fall to 4-1 and one as they suffer their first loss. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Giants. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.